having trouble with making the tombstone obelisk, so here I am with a video to actually talk you through it. You will see that I have got Tinkercad open right now. First thing I'm going to do on this project is I'm changing the name. Tinkercad loves its obnoxious random names, but we want it to know what our project is. So I am going to say tombstone and forth. version one. Okay, from there we're going to start working on the base. We can take a box from the side on Tinkercad and I put it mostly in the center but I might actually want to be able to zoom in exactly on the center. This tool or pressing the F key will fit your screen spe specifically to the selected shape. So that actually is a really useful tool in Tinkercad because it means you can rotate around a specific shape and you will actually get the focus of the camera to stay on that shape rather than having to try and fight with the camera to sh get it to show you exactly what you want. <clears throat> From there, I'm going to need to adjust the size of this box. Now, you'll see that I have several different places that I can click on this box. I want to make sure that the box is 22 millimeters wide, 22 millimeters deep, and 10 millimeters high. So that means I need 22 millimeters across, I need 22 millimeters deep, and I need 10 millimeters up. So I'm going to start by doing that. Bring the height down to 10 millimeters. Bring the width across to 22 and bring the depth to 22 also. Now you'll notice that my numbers are going by half millimeter increments. I had my grid set to half millimeter. When you open Tinkercad, it sets it to one millimeter. And you can also customize that as well. I usually work on Tinkercad with it at one tenth of a millimeter, but we don't really need that right now. So I'm going to leave it on one millimeter and we'll change it back in a few minutes. <clears throat> Next up, I'm going to start to use holes. So you can see up in the shape box up here, we have the option between having our object be solid or having it be a hole. Now when you create a hole and you can switch any object into being a hole as well, it goes this kind of translucent color. Now, this isn't going to be an actual object right now, but when you group it with another object in Tinkercad, it's actually going to cut out the shape of the hole. And again, the hole can be anything. So you can create, you can get really creative with this. You can create a lot of different shapes. Right now though, we're going to bring the hole out as a wedge. <clears throat> we are going to rotate this wedge, not move it, we're going to rotate it so that we get the hypotenuse facing the box. The hypotenuse, remember, is that long side right along here. I can rotate these, there's actually three sets of curved arrows on every object in Tinkercad and you can use them to adjust the angle of your shape. And I'm gonna rotate it forward as well. You'll notice that you can go far away from the object to get a one degree amount of control over your rotation, or you can actually spin it in to get larger rotations that set to 90 degree angles. I'm going to set it to a 90 degree angle right now. So I've got the long side of the <clears throat> wedge facing the box, kind of like I've only got the top corner of the box cut out. Now this object I'm also going to want to adjust the size of because we're actually going to use it to cut a hole in our box. We want it to be 22 millimeters deep. We're going to want it to be 10 millimeters high. And we're going to want to bring it all the way in so it's just one millimeter wide. <clears throat> now I'm going to take this object and turn it into a hole. And from there, I'm going to align it with the edge of the box. So what this means 
is that if I group these two objects together like this, it's going to cut the box out so you get an angle. Now this is pretty subtle. It's going to be difficult to notice in the final project, but it will be there. And as we're building it, it'll become more and more obvious. So I'm going to just duplicate that particular hole four times. I'm going to do this once for each side of the box. Each time I'm going to use the curved arrows on the inside to turn it at a 90 degree angle so that the long side is facing inward. And I'm going to match these up to each side of the box. And as you can see, it can be a little bit easier to navigate when you do this from top view. If you're close to the bottom of Tinkercad's plane, sometimes the mouse does funny things with perspective. So I'm just rotating each of these, making sure that I've got the long side on the inside, and I'm arranging them outside of the entire box. Now I can take that box, I can group them together, and that is going to give me some nice slanted angles. Again, hard to see a little bit. It's a fairly subtle effect right now, but that's good. What we want is subtle. Okay, next step, I'm going to take another box. Now, this box I'm actually going to bring up to fit, sit on top of the other one. You can do this two ways. You could actually raise it up 10 millimeters, but there's another quicker and easier way. If you press the W button, you can move the surface of the work plane. And that um, cylinder or cone on top of the work plane is actually pointing which way the work plane is going to consider up. So when I drag out the box now, it comes even on this work plane, which I've placed right on top of my other box. And so I can get them, hypothetically, to line up quite nicely. Ah, and what we actually see here is they're half a millimeter off because my grid is set to one millimeter right now. It's having some trouble lining them up. The other thing you could actually do if you want to line them up and you're struggling with it is you can select both objects and this tool up here is a line. You can also press the L key. And what that will do is that will center both objects on each other. Now, you will want to do that on all sides to make sure that it's centered properly. From here, we do want a 20 millimeter by 20 millimeter box, which works because that's the default when Tinkercad brings out a box. We want it to be five millimeters tall. And then we're going to do the same thing. We're going to take out a bunch of wedges. Now, I actually got rid of my work plane. I'm going to bring it back so the wedges end up on there. And we're going to do this just like we did with the last one. We're going to face them in, just like the boxes. They come out at 20 millimeters wide, which is perfect for our purposes. We want it to be five millimeters high. And we're going to want it to be two and a half millimeters thick. Okay, you can see with the colors there how that lines up nicely with our second layer. I'm going to click on hole, turn it into a hole. Just zoom in a little bit on this. And now I'm going to duplicate that hole. Now I'm going to bring it around to the four sides of the box. Just like so. Okay, now when I select these and group them together, I'm actually going to go across here. And the reason I'm doing that 
is because I don't want to actually catch the lower level as well. If you select and there's an object behind what you're, or if you drag select and there's an object behind what you're selecting, you'll select the object in the back too. So you want to select so that you're excluding any objects that you don't need. Now, this is much more obvious. We can see that the shape has been cut nice and cleanly. Now I can group these two together as well. So when I group things together, it makes it into one object. And the nice thing about this is that this object, when it's grouped together, I can just click on it once and I can copy it. Now, this is actually going to become our third and fourth layers. The dimensions are going to be a little bit different. This time we want it to be 15 by 15. So we've got 15, and now we've got 15. You'll notice that when I drag on the corners, I'm able to change both sides at once. If I drag on only one side, I only change that side. Now this box, I'm going to raise up with that arrow cone. I want to make sure that it goes just level with my second layer. Once I've got it that high, it should be 15 millimeters. I can place it on top as such. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to ungroup until I see the wedges on the top layer. So the ungroup button, the shortcut is control shift G, but you can also just click ungroup. And actually here I went a little bit too far because I got all of the boxes. If you ungroup something, all of the objects you ungrouped out of it remain selected. I only want to see the wedges on top, so I'm going to regroup the stuff on the bottom. Did I catch everything? I caught everything. One second. There we go. Now I just have the wedges that are up on top. I am going to adjust these wedges. <clears throat> now I want each wedge to be 2.5 millimeters wide. Now you'll notice that with the scale like this, it's throwing it off a little bit because it actually is starting at 1.7. So I'm going to adjust my grid here and zoom it in. Okay. Now you'll also notice that the numbers are just a little bit off. I'm not super worried about it, but if you really, really, really want to, you can actually click on the side and then you can manually edit. I've found before this isn't quite perfect, so be careful with it. But it can be useful if you've got it just a little bit off, and Tinkercad is a bit prone to things going just a little bit off once you start to get a lot of shapes in it. So if that level of precision matters to you, and doesn't really matter to me on this one, but some projects it does, you can manually adjust it. I would suggest get it close though to make sure it looks right and then once you've got it close you can adjust it. Okay, now we're going to regroup this top layer. We're making progress. Ah, okay, what you see here is the wedge came out a little bit. This can actually be quite annoying. But we do have a tool to deal with that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select that wedge that's popping out the side and I'm going to select the box and I'm going to use the align tool. Now I'm not going to align them to the center because that's going to move the wedge into the center. 
But what I'm going to do is I'm going to align the wedge to the edge that I want it to be on, to the right hand side. That should take care of that little bit that was just failing to cut. Ah, and you see, perfectly cut out right there. Next step, I'm going to move the work plane up to the top and I'm going to put yet another box. Now it's going to get a little bit trickier to get the numbers right here. So this is the time when I would usually start eyeballing stuff a little bit more. And Tinkercad, since it started its second version, actually has a really neat tool that allows us to do that. We can make any given box transparent so we can see through it. And this works with any object, not just the boxes. So that can actually let us align really nicely and make sure that we've got everything perfect. We can see the other objects. This one's not quite perfect. There we go. This way, you can actually see what you're trying to work on underneath it. Makes life a whole lot easier, especially if you're trying to merge two objects together, or if the location of one object is dependent on the location of another one. So you'll see that I've now got mine to be about 8.7 millimeters, both wide and deep. And I'm going to bring it down, so it's 6.7. Now, I am going to turn this back to solid. I just turn off the transparent. <clears throat> and I'm going to take a moment to group everything together so that we don't lose everything. And now when I center it, it's actually centered on the entire object. Ah, except I did not want to do that, and here's why forgot my own schedule of work. I'm going to copy the fourth level. Okay, just like that. But I'm not going to use it here. I'm going to bring the work plane up to the top and then paste it. If you want to move an object while you're using the work plane, you need to copy it. If it's on the work plane already, you need to copy it before you move the work plane. Because if you copy it afterwards, it's just going to end up in the same place. It copies relative to where the work plane is. Now this time, I'm going to flip it over 180 degrees so that it inverts. I'm going to focus on this object. And I'm going to bring it in so that it matches up with a square there. Now we're going to bring in a box. Oh, hey, what's this? We can just copy the third level. And again, though, just be careful of where you're placing everything. Now I'm actually going to bring this in a little bit. Actually, that's a lie. What I'm going to do is I'm going to flip this upside down. This way it matches up. Now the problem with doing this is that the inside of this level doesn't match with the outline. So we got to eyeball it a little bit here to try and get everything even. Of course, if you don't want to eyeball it, there's a fix for that. As well, when you're trying to move things, you can also shift them with your mouse. And pushing left or right on the mouse will just shuffle it by whatever grid you particularly need. I'm going to bring this level down to 3 millimeters, and I'm actually going to duplicate it again going to place it on top.
and that didn't quite work the way I wanted it to. So I'm going to have to raise this one up. That's okay. And then I'm going to flip this. So now we have a bulge in the middle. I need to shift this over a little bit. There we go. A little bit more. And does that work perfectly? That looks very nice. Okay. You'll notice that a lot of what I'm doing here is I'm trying to make less work for myself. Oh, that's not the right one. Right? Like, the less work that you actually have to do, the easier your life is. You don't want to make the... You can make Tinkercad projects super complicated. But if you can avoid making your sculpting very, very difficult, it'll save you in the long run. And right now, I'm not really paying attention to specific sizes. I'm just eyeballing it to see what I think looks good. You might do your project slightly differently, right? Like, I don't need to match it to an exact height. It just depends on how I want it to look. The nice thing about 3D printing is that it gives you the freedom to create what you want. I am going to be a little bit pedantic though and try to get this to exactly 45 millimeters. Last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cap this off. Again, I'm going to have to eyeball this one because the inside of this shape doesn't match the outline. The base is wider. So where, where did you go? Here we are. Pyramid. I'm going to bring out a pyramid. I'm going to do what I did before. I'm going to make it transparent. And I'm just going to go and match the shapes up so that those corners are aligned nicely. Now, this looks a bit too spiky for my taste, so I'm going to bring it down. Maybe you do something different. That's quite all right if you do. Turn it back to solid. Now, it is a different color, and that's only because the pyramid shape here is a different color. If I wanted it to be red, I could make it red. If I wanted it to be blue, I can make it blue. Or, when I group everything together, it will all turn the same color, although I can turn it back if I want to. Last thing I'm going to do with this project is I'm going to align everything. You won't always want to align everything in the end. If you're building a model, you might want it to have an asymmetrical shape. But in this, I want it to be nice and symmetrical. I can see that things are just a little bit off, which is why these aren't grayed out to start. If everything is perfectly lined up, they actually don't gray out at all. Or they don't show up black. You can't click them. They'll be grayed out to begin with. Things are a little bit off here, though. So I am going to make sure that I align it correctly. You'll also note I didn't use anything on the side because that just undoes all of our hard work. You can It's useful, but you don't always want to use it. Last step, I'm going to group everything together. You'll see that that turns red. If you want to add an inscription on this somewhere, you absolutely can. You can change the text to put a rest in peace somewhere. You can have that pop out, or you can turn it into a hole. Me, I'm going to leave it as a blank obelisk. And then finally, if I want to download it, I'm going to go to export. I prefer downloading as STLs. Some people prefer downloading as OBJs. Doesn't particularly matter. And you see that downloaded quite nicely down there. Hopefully that was helpful. Thank you for watching.